Got another video on the 2004 GMC Sierra 2500 HD with the Duramax diesel. Gonna be draining the cooling system and then replacing the water pump along with the thermostats and then also flushing out the uh, heater core. So go ahead and pop your hood. So first go ahead and uh, pull off your cap off your coolant reservoir here. And you wanna make sure the uh, cooling system's cool when you're doing this. Next, go ahead and uh, come down here to the passenger side front here, and you'll see you got a radiator drain right there. So make sure you got a large drip pan. Let's go ahead and open that up. So just reach up here and go ahead and unscrew this. Should start leaking coolant out. So just kind of like that. I'm not going to pull it out all the way because it'll make a huge mess. So just let that go ahead and drain. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just disconnect both batteries just to be safe. So grab an 8mm. Let's go ahead and pull these terminals off here. Next, we're going to need to uh, remove this whole fan shroud here. But let's go ahead and take this cover off first. So you got two 10mm bolts. Let's go ahead and remove those. And then you kind of just pull up on this and then let's disconnect the TCM here just by these tabs here so you push in on that and then pull out same with this bottom one here out of here and then if you take a look just below where we pulled that off there should be two tabs here but you can see we're missing one on this side so that one there so what you want to do get you a trim tool like this try to get up underneath the round part there the lift up on that a little bit and then get up under the larger round part here and then you can pull that out of there and then come over here to the passenger side and you'll have the same thing but as you can see we're missing that one so let's go ahead and get that one out this one's a little bit tighter to get into so i got another style tool here kind of goes down in there let's see if we can get up under that Just above that, you got your AC hose here. Go ahead and just pull this out of the little clip here. And then by that hose we just took off, you'll have two 10 millimeters right there. Go ahead and remove those. And now we should be able to pull this whole upper shroud out. Just kind of lift up on it. Get that out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove the fan clutch here uh, with our belt still on, that'll make it a little easier. Uh, they make kits you can rent at the auto parts store for this, uh, to where you can kind of hold the pulley there and then break free that uh, nut down there for the fan clutch. But I'm gonna be using my air hammer and a new, new tool I got, so let me show you that. Okay, so if you guys know, these fan clutches can be a pain to get off sometimes. So I thought I'd try out this brand new tool. Harbor Freight just came out with it. I picked this up the other day. Uh, it's the Maddox MT8-1 and you can see pneumatic fan clutch wrench set and you can see looks like it fits Ford, GM, Chrysler and Jeep. I'm sure many others as well. And uh, open it up here. You can see we got a bunch of different size wrenches in here. The size you're going to want to use is uh, either the 47 millimeter or the inch and seven eighths. 
I find the 47 millimeter fit on there a little tighter than the uh, inch and seven eighths. So I'm gonna give that a shot. And then of course I'll be uh, hooking it up to my air hammer here. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out. And I'll put a link in the description for this as well. So I'm gonna try to get you guys the best angle, but you can see our fan clutch nut there. And you can see somebody has been in here before has had that off. You can see they kind of rounded it a little bit and you can see it's uh, by the rust there. So that's what you don't want to do. Um, you can also take your air hammer with a chisel and then just uh, kind of chisel one in there and then break it free. But on these fan clutches here, you want to go, it's just like normal threads, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So you want to go counterclockwise to uh, break that free. So what you want to do, take your 47 millimeter and then uh, you'll see the hook part. So the hook part, you're going to want to clip in here like this and you can see this little notch here. So you're going to take that, spin it around to bear it where it's about like that. And then, like I said, we're going to hammer down. So that's going to make this turn. So you want to make sure you got your hook facing the right way. And then we'll get on that nut down there. And then I'll take my air hammer and we'll just do a couple blows here. And hopefully that breaks that free. And then we can just spin the fan off here. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. But uh, go ahead and take your wrench here. You want to get on that nut all the way on there. It's kind of like that. So let me grab my air hammer. Get that clipped on here. And then I'm going to give it a couple blows here and let's see if that uh, pops that loose. So you can see that nut is loose now. Let me undo my air hammer. And try to get the wrench off here. And then as you can see, well, it was loose. Let me just try and turn this by hand here. And just kind of use your hand with the tool here. And you can see that nut is spinning. And then just spin this off. Just be careful, you don't want this falling down into the radiator fins there. So make sure you got a good grip on it. And then just spin that off. And you can kind of tell when you're getting to the end because it gets kind of wobbly. Go ahead and pull that out. Next, let's go ahead and uh, remove the serpentine belt. So come over here to your belt tensioner. You can see you got a slot there for a half inch uh, breaker bar or socket wrench, whatever you want to use. And uh, we'll go ahead and slip this belt off. And I will be replacing this. As you can see, this belt is about ready to fail here. So good thing we picked up another belt. So like I said, just go ahead and stick this in here. What you want to do from this angle, you want to pull up. You can see, relieves the tension. And then you can just slip it off one pulley or another here. And then just go ahead and relieve the tension here. And then you can slip this off. And then you might, may wanna just take note of how this belt was routed. There's also a diagram here under the hood we can refer to as well. So get this off and uh, out of here. So next we need to remove this whole uh, pulley assembly here, but we need to unplug that sensor first. So you can see you got a little tab right here. So you push down on that and then we'll pull out. So just like that. Next, grab a 14 millimeter. And right by that sensor we just pulled, you're gonna have 
We need to remove this here, another one here, and then right underneath this idler pulley, there's one right there. So go ahead and uh, pull all of those off. over to the other side of that and you'll have a nut right there and then another 14 millimeter right there and then if you take a look all three of these bolts are going to be exactly the same size so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up and now you should be able to just pull that out of there Slides off of those studs and pull that out. Next, we're going to need to remove this uh, harmonic balancer here. So you need to make sure you have a 36 millimeter 12 point socket to break that free, that bolt there. Uh, but this is just going to turn on you if you try loosening it now. So what we need to do is crawl underneath the vehicle there. And I got a little special tool that will jam in the uh, teeth of the flex plate to keep that from moving. What you want to do is crawl underneath the vehicle here and uh, you'll locate your uh, oil pan is going to be right here and then of course your transmission filter here and then you got this little dust cover here. So what you want to do is take a flathead screwdriver, kind of stick that up in there and this just pops out of here. that you can see it just kind of bends like that to get it out of there so next what you want to do is you grab this little tool here it's from a company called uh, Leslie and I'll put a link in the description uh, you can get this off of Amazon here it comes in really handy I use this on my little focus when I did the timing belt uh, but what you want to do is this is going to slide in there like this and then the flex plate teeth are going to slide into these little notches here and this is actually going to hold that flex plate uh, to keep it from turning. But what you want to do even says on here, make sure you remove this uh, before we go ahead and start it. So don't forget to do that or you're going to have a bunch of problems. So just kind of stick this up in here and you kind of got to get it just right. Just slides in there like that. You can see it kind of locks in there and uh, that'll prevent that flex plate from turning. So next comes the fun part. Uh, this bolt can be pretty hard to get out of there. I think it's torqued uh, right around like 270 foot pounds so quite a bit so what you want to use make sure you got a big breaker bar um, and then like I said along with your 36 millimeter 12 point socket here so I'm going to stick that on there and then what I think I'm going to use actually let me bring this up so I'm going to get it about like that and then if you guys got a just got this large cheater bar I'm gonna stick on the end of this. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can break this free. Like I said, this can be on there pretty tight. And you wanna make sure you're not gonna slip off of there as well. So, let's see if I can get on this other side here. So kinda like that. Let me readjust here. Once you get it broken free, it actually comes out pretty easy. See, and then you can just kind of spin that out of there. That looks like you got a little washer on there as well actually a large washer and then what's nice about this is you should be able to just pull this off of here just kind of move it back and forth that slides right off and if you take a look here you got a little key there so make sure you get that 
uh, in place when you go to stick it back on. And then go ahead and crawl underneath the truck here. We're gonna remove this plastic skid plate here. So it looks like we got four 15 millimeter bolts. So go ahead and uh, pull those off. And then what you wanna do is grab yourself another drain pan or you can use your uh, same one here. Just close up the uh, drain there if it's done. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this one underneath here because we're gonna go ahead and remove this lower radiator hose from the uh, water pump next and that's probably gonna make a mess if there's any left in there. So make sure you got a drip pan here. And then come up top here. Let's go ahead and loosen up this hose clamp here. Uh, I'm not sure this might've came with the original spring clamp, but like I said, somebody's been in here before. Uh, so I got this style hose clamp. So let me go ahead and unscrew that. Get that nice and loose. And then I'm gonna go down below and let's see if I can pull that off real quick. just like that and then you can come down below here and you can kind of just take this hose and the rest of that coolant's going to pour out of here let's try to get all that out and we'll probably just leave it kind of hanging like that next grab a 12 millimeter let's go ahead and uh, remove these two bolts here Next, grab yourself a pair of pliers. Let's go ahead and uh, slide these clips either out or in so we can get this uh, rubber hose off of here. So next, what you wanna do is uh, we need to remove this whole tube. And uh, this goes up into the thermostat housing with just an O-ring, so it kind of lifts up and pops in there. Um, and then we'll try to get this hose off all you gotta do on this is it, you see it just kind of breaks free there. Um, so let's see if we can get this hose off of here. It's probably the hardest part. So if you can somewhat pull this off. So kind of like that. And then just kind of slide this outward. That should just pop out of there. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth while pressing down. Eventually it'll come out. There we go. You can see. So all that is is just an O-ring holding that in there. So next we need to, uh, right here on the water pump, right behind this, there's gonna be a couple studs with uh, 12 millimeter bolts that we need to pull off. So I'm gonna crawl underneath and show you guys really quick. Another thing you can do is you can take off the uh, inner fender well here on the driver's side and also the uh, inner cooler pipe here to get better access if you wanted to to those. But that just creates more work. So I'm gonna try and see if we can uh, do this from just either reaching around underneath here or going uh, all the way underneath there and uh, undoing the nuts. So if you crawl underneath here, and uh, right above your steering gearbox here, as you can see right here, this is what I'm talking about. So you got two studs and then two nuts holding that on. So if you can get up under here with your 12 millimeter or reach around from up above, let's see if we can uh, get these at least loosened off of here. They're not really on there too tight.
So there's that one. And let's see if we can get this other one here. So like I said, if you get it loose, they come off pretty easy by hand. And there is that one. Then come back up top here. Let's go ahead and start removing the water pump bolts. So right here, power steering, pump pulley. And then you got a bolt right there that's gonna be a 12 millimeter. So go ahead and pull that one off. over to the other side here and uh, you're gonna have a stud right here with a 12 millimeter nut on it that is why we needed to remove the uh, harmonic balancer to get to that nut so go ahead and pull that off that looks like and then right on top here go ahead and remove this 12 millimeter so make sure your uh, drip pan centered under there and we should be able to uh, pull this water pump off now does not want to come out of there. All right guys, so it looks like I'm getting caught on uh, where those studs are. That little tube that we pulled the 12 millimeters off, it seems like it's getting stuck right there. Let me try this again. It's like those studs are just getting stuck on that hose there. So yeah, right back in here. Let's try this again. There we go. So somehow it was getting stuck on these two studs here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our new water pump here. So um, I went with this one here. It's from a company called Dirty Hooker Diesel. I'll put a link in the description to it. Uh, but they claim this is probably the best uh, aftermarket water pump on the market right now. Uh, a lot of guys went with the uh, welded one here. This one is not welded. But I heard they're having a lot of issues now with the welded ones because of the heat and stress it puts on the shaft and everything. Uh, but Dirty Hooker Diesel claims that this can handle, you know, a lot more horsepower and everything and you won't have any issues with it. So, And it does include all new gaskets and everything you need. And then they also include these two bolts here. So if you take a look at this paper, they show you where they go. And with these bolts, getting rid of that stud there. Um, you can now take this water pump out if you needed to without having to remove that uh, harmonic balancer like we did So but you can see pretty much compares to the old one about the same uh, There's two two holes here instead of the single one, uh, but that shouldn't make any difference And then uh, we will have to reuse these two studs here. So let's go ahead and uh, pull those off now All right guys, so I went ahead and tried to remove just one of these studs here uh, you'll want to use a Torx E8. I tried to remove this one. This one was so seized in there that it actually ended up breaking. Um, I was able to get this one loose, but this one, uh, it's just seized in there. So I ended up just going by my uh, local dealership here. Luckily, they were still open. 
and it ended up getting the uh, GM116-11145. I'll put a link in the description for these. Um, I just went ahead and bought two new studs instead of dealing with that. So not sure why they don't just include new ones uh, with the water pump, but oh well. So go ahead and uh, get these screwed in here. Like I said, you guys can try to get those out. That one was, I was able to loosen up, but like I said, that one just seized in there so bad. So get these uh, started in there. And then uh, take your E8 and go ahead and tighten those up into there. Next, just take you a cap of uh, fresh motor oil. I like to just coat this new large O-ring um, in this oil, just to lube it up a little better here. Just kind of like that. Get it in place here. And you can just kind of use a pick if you need to, just to kind of pull it. Get that in place, just like that. Next, what you wanna do is get this all cleaned up here. Also uh, along there, I just kinda took my wire wheel, cleaned this all up, cause they had that paper gasket that was on there and just kinda made a mess. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this stud here since we're not be, uh, we won't be using this with the nut. We'll be using the supplied bolt they gave us. So if you guys, Go with the dirty hooker diesel one. You can remove the stud. It's gonna be the same, a Torx E8. So you can go ahead and remove that. There's that. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do next is, um, this came with a metal gasket, which usually you don't wanna use sealant on, but um, you can see there's kind of a little pit here and uh, I think what I'm going to use, I got some of this high tack gasket sealant. So I think I'm just going to put a thin coat around here just to make sure this uh, metal gasket seals correctly. And then I'll put some on the other side as well. Like I said, I'm just not sure. It seems how there's a, just a small pit kind of right there just to fill in any voids if there is any. Like I said, I'm not going to use much, though. Then you can take your gasket here. Get that on there just like that. And we'll put a coat of this on that uh, water pipe there. So I'll just put a little dab on this as well. Just like that. Let's go ahead and grab our water pump and let's uh, get it on here. Grab your water pump. And let's go ahead and get this down in here. So try to get that through that pipe first, those studs. up on here and you just want to make sure that gets in there all the way your gears hopefully your gear lines up It's going to go on the top here. That's going to go on this first hole that says on the instructions. So go ahead and try to get that one started. And then the long bolt is going to replace that stud 
That was down here. Kind of hard to see down into that hole there. And then take your one, your longer one that you removed with the other water pump, and you'll stick that one in this hole here. And then grab a six millimeter Allen head. And let's go ahead and get these at least uh, snugged up here. Grab your 12 millimeter and get that one snugged up as well. So with those evenly snugged up, grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque all three of those to 18 foot pounds. Start out on this one down here. And then I'll go ahead and do this one down here. Try to get on that one. And then of course the top one here. like that. Now let's go ahead and uh, put on our two 12 millimeter nuts from underneath. And then again, reach up under here. Like I said, right where the uh, plastic skid plate was, it's the best way to reach up here. And then get your two 12 millimeter nuts back on the studs here. And of course, we're not going to be able to get a torque wrench up in here. But these would be torqued to 18 foot pounds as well. So just kind of try to get those hand tight, and then just go off a of judgment on uh, 18 foot pounds. And then I just use my uh, 12 millimeter stubby gear wrench here. Seems like that works the best. It's probably about like that. All right, guys, so now let's go ahead and do the uh, thermostat bypass tube here. Um, so I went ahead and cleaned this up and it was really rusted. And you can see how it's just deteriorated and pitted along here. So I'm not sure if that's going to get a correct seal when we put that on there since there's an O-ring that goes along here. Uh, so I went ahead and just bought a new one uh, while I was at the dealership picking up those studs. This was about $64. Bucks. Um, Dorman does make one of these that the auto parts uh, stores sell. But uh, from the reviews I read, everybody says do not go with the Dorman one. Um, it doesn't fit right and the bends in the pipe are not correct like the OEM one. So uh, I'll put a link in the description for this OEM one and then also had to buy a new gasket which will go or O-ring which will go around here. And then um, I was looking at this hose here. This starts to deteriorate and get brittle over time as well from all the heat and everything. And if you look here, you can see there's kind of a split in this hose. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, pull this off. I'll measure it out and then I got some uh, replacement uh, heater hose here which I'll cut the same length and we'll go ahead and uh, replace that hose. So I'll just kind of see if I can pull this off of here. Break that seal and then I'll measure the same length and uh, cut a new hose here. So take your hose here and like I said, we'll just cut it the same length. I'll just use a brand new razor here. 
So get that kind of matched up there. And then take your razor. I'll just go straight down. So kind of like that. And then this is a 3 8 hose. And you can see that'll fit on there just perfect. So then just take your O-ring here. Do the same thing, just kind of put some oil on it, just to lube it up a little bit here. And then we'll go ahead and stick this on the new pipe. Take your pick, kind of pull at it here. So just like that. And grab your heater hose. I'll stick this clip or that clamp on there, like kind of like that again. Just kind of get that started on there. So next, let's go ahead and get our uh, thermostat bypass tube in here. Um, got your O-ring. Went ahead and oiled this. The one that came with the water pump. So that's going to sit down into there. And then you want to be really careful. You can see it doesn't want to fit in there too well, does it? So kind of get that squished in there. That way it doesn't pop out. And then uh, we need to get that tube shoved up into here as much as we can because we're going to have to swing that kind of over and you don't want to mess up this o-ring here so pull the hose off of that and i'm going to put that on this first actually let's kind of get that slid on there and then what i'll do is let's go ahead and get this inserted up in here i'm actually going to kind of turn it get that popped up in there first So kind of like that, and then let's see if I can kind of turn this. Just watch this O-ring down here as you're turning this. So kind of like that, and then I think I'm gonna get these uh bolt started first and then we'll get that on that way it holds this kind of in place and doesn't get that o-ring moving around so let me grab them bolts so get these kind of started just something like that that'll prevent that from moving now let's see if we can maybe get this hose on here so we have to just kind of Bend this out some. This does not want to pop on there. There we go. So just kind of work with it. And then we'll slide this over a little bit. Kind of like that, and then we'll get our clips on. So then go ahead and grab your pliers. Let's go ahead and get those hose clamps on really quick here. All right guys, so my camera died on me. Um, so I went ahead and let that charge, but while I let that charge, um, I went ahead and just pulled off those old hose clamps that were on here. Felt like there wasn't enough tension on them, like they weren't springing uh, hard enough. So I went ahead and just put on some uh, normal hose clamps on that with the uh, screw-in type. So now let's go ahead and uh, torque down these uh, two bolts here. That's going to be 18 foot-pounds. So I kind of got to use an extension to get down in here. 
Just even these out a little bit. Just double check since I got a long extension. Just like that. So next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crawl underneath. I'll get my uh, lower radiator hose onto the water pump there. Get that pushed on. And we'll go ahead and tighten up this hose clamp here. Just like that. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for the water pump. Um, so before we go ahead and uh, start putting any of this back together, since we got the room, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the uh, thermostats really quick. Get those out of the way. So first let's go ahead and remove this uh, little air intake here. So what you wanna do is um, got this hose clamp back here. So just take an eight millimeter nut driver, go ahead and loosen that up. And then if you come right here, you got a Torx. Uh, I believe it's a T27. Yeah, T27. Go ahead and pull that off. And then you should be able to just pop this off of here. Just like that. Next, go ahead and come over here. You've got these wire looms. Just take a pick or a screwdriver and you can get up under here. And then those just kind of pop out of there like that. Same with this one here. Just to free those up a little bit here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this temp sensor here because these wires, you can see it's missing the plastic uh, protective that goes around it. But these are pretty tight along here, so I'm just going to go ahead and unplug that. So you take your pick and get up underneath this clip here. And that pops off of there like that. And actually, guys, if you take a look here, you can see that's actually broke on there. So you can see there's still some plastic on this right here. So it's still making, con must have been making contact on there, holding it like that. But you can see, all I gotta do is pull it off. So I'll have to unclip this and then I'll probably see if I can find a replacement. But you can see, if I can undo this here. All right guys, so I was able to get that off of there. So it should look like this. Let me pull that off of there. So I'm going to have to uh, see if I can get, I believe that's probably just a coolant temp sensor. So I'll have to get a new one of those. And then I'll show you here. So this is also broken as well. Um, you can see it's almost like it melted on there. And that's just for his AC system here. And uh, show you this really quick here too. So somebody zip tied these two together because uh, somebody must have broke the clips on this. So uh, just be careful as you guys are messing with these older trucks like this. They're just kind of brittle and everything. Next, go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull these four bolts right there. You can leave this one in because that's your bleeder screw. Let's go ahead and pop those off. So we need to be able to lift this because uh, this goes to the thermostat housing and all that. Here's your upper radiator hose, but we need to be able to lift this up to get that housing lifted up to get our thermostats. So it looks like we're gonna have to, cause you got an ax, you got access to this bolt here, but there's another one on the other side and it looks like these are covering that. So we're gonna have to unplug these. I didn't really wanna mess with these, but. So what you wanna do is you'll push this back and you can see that kind of releases that. And then like I said, this one's broken. You can see the clip's gone. So let me grab my uh, dikes and we'll go ahead and cut those zip ties. 
Just go ahead and cut those. Just have to re-zip tie them when we put this back together, I guess. this one I'm assuming so I think what I'll try is a couple picks here I'll go around these two round spots here and let's just see if I can kind of pull towards me It's kind of like that, I guess. Next, go ahead and take a Torx T30. Let's go ahead and pull that screw off right there. And that kind of gets that out of the way on this bracket. And I'll just pull this one off as well. That way those are kind of out of the way here. Next, to get this bracket out of here, looks like we got a 12 millimeter bolt there. And then you got one right here, right down there. And then another one, it's kind of hard to see. Um, get these out of the way here. But you're gonna have another one right back in there. So let's go ahead and pull those really quick here. So let me pull this one here. It's kind of hard to hold the camera here, so let me move this. And go ahead and undo this one here. Like I said, not sure how well you guys can see this. So you got your 12 millimeter down in here. So there's that one. And then this last one is right down in here. Sorry about that, that one was really tight for some reason. So there's that one. And now, we can just kind of move this over to the right here. And now we'll have access to that one. So then go ahead and undo those two. magnet for that. There's that one. So now let's see if that gives us enough wiggle room. Yeah, to lift this up. And might be getting caught in this alternator wire here but let's see if we can just get it up enough here so you can see our thermostats down in there uh might be easier if we remove this ac compressor here to see what we're actually doing yeah let me do that so go ahead and disconnect this sensor here you can see you got a couple tabs here to kind of bend out. And that'll just unplug there. Just like that. 
And then of course this, let me zoom out here. If this wasn't broken here, you would go ahead and just unplug that right there. But like I said earlier, that's broken there. So next grab a 15 millimeter and let's go ahead and undo these four bolts right here. And then let's just see if we can kind of tilt this out of the way. Just set it over here for right now. That gives us a little better access here. Still this alternator wire is kind of in the way here. So let me undo that as well. So on the back side of your alternator here, you'll have this rubber boot to kind of pull that back. And then you'll see you got a 10 millimeter nut. So go ahead and loosen that up. And then you can pull this off, that stud there. And that gives us a lot more room. So now we should have a lot more room with that out of the way. So you can lift up on this. And you can see our uh, thermostats there. So let me grab a pair of pliers. So grab a pair of pliers. And let's go ahead and pull these out of here. There's that one. Same with this one. All right, so let's take a look at our new thermostats. Um, so as you can see, the, the one with the bleeder is gonna go in the back. They also give you this sheet of paper here showing that front of the engine. And then of course, the bleeder one is gonna go in the back. And uh, so the reason I'm changing these out is because uh, this guy's truck is not getting over like 150 degrees. It stays about there. It doesn't get any hotter than that. And if you take a look here, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but you can kind of see that that's not down all the way. So it looks like this thermostat is stuck kind of a little bit open there. So that's not letting the engine uh, warm up to where it should be. So I went with these uh, Motorrad. It's going to be the 447-448. Got these off Amazon, I'll put a link in the description for them. But you can see they come with the new um, gasket O-ring around them. Same with this one here. So uh, let's go ahead and install those. So I went ahead and just kind of cleaned up this coolant that was here and then kind of wiped that down a little bit. So take your new thermostat and just double check, make sure that gasket's in there. Um, you can see it kind of slides in the middle there and then latches on. And like I said, look at your little sheet they give you on here. So the front of the engine's this way, and you can see the one with the bleeder's gonna go that way, and it looks like those two bleeders are gonna go on the back there. So we'll take this one, go ahead and drop that down in there, and then just turn it to where those are on the back side. Grab your other one, this one doesn't have any of that, so you don't have to worry about it. And then just go ahead and drop this one down in there. So just kind of like that. So then with your thermostats in there, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, get your housing back down below here. Kind of seat that on there, get your bolts started. And then I did order a new temperature coolant temp sensor. My son's gonna bring that home on his way home. And then you can just go ahead and get all four of those snug really quick here. And then grab your torque wrench, torque those down to 15 foot pounds.
So now we can go ahead and get our uh, AC compressor back in place here. Just watch your wires. Get that set up on there. Every four bolts, get those back in place. Grab your 15 millimeter, let's go ahead and tighten those up. And then you go ahead and plug in your clutch switch here. And then I'll have to uh, figure out what I'm going to do with that. Probably have to order a new sensor here. I think this is the uh, cutoff uh, sensor for the AC, so I have to look into that, get that ordered up. And then you can go ahead and get your alternator wire back on here. And then you can go ahead and uh, get these back in these little clips here. That one closed on me. All right, so my son just got back from the parts store. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that uh, coolant temp sensor there. And that's just a 19 millimeter. right there so I just went with the uh, NTK EF0008 and just make sure it lines up matches up with your old one here you see that looks right and then we got our two pins so let's go ahead and stick that in get that started in there See if I can pull this cap off. See if that gives us a little more room. Just get it kind of snug. It doesn't have to be super tight because of the red sealant that's on it. And then you go ahead and plug this in. And I did, uh, since this was all brittle and falling apart, I did put some uh, protective wrap on that wire there just to protect it. And then go ahead and plug that in. Now we're all good there. Next, we'll go ahead and uh, get this bracket and everything back on. I looked everywhere for that bolt that I dropped here. I even took my inner fender well off and I cannot find it for some reason. So I'm going to have to pick one of these up tomorrow. A local ace or whatever. So I'll have to leave one out, but go ahead and uh, try to get that one back in there. And then let's see if we can get this bracket put back where it should be. Probably start out with this um, back one here, since that one's kind of hard to get to back here. And then I'll do that one down in there. And I'll leave this, this one back in here out, because that one's probably the easiest to get to. I'll drop that in once I get one tomorrow. And then you can kind of get these all sorted back out the way they should. Just need to go underneath here. Kind of like that. And you get these tabs put in where they should be. 
Grab your two torque screws. Get those back in place. And let's tighten those down. And again, that's a Torx T30. And then I'll go ahead and get this plug back in. Again, I'll have to get my zip ties around this. Just make sure those go in evenly. Don't want to bend any of those pins. So that's set it kind of like that. Let me go ahead and zip tie that up real quick. All right, so I got that all zip tied up. So then go ahead and stick in your other one here. And latch that down. So we should be good just like that. So now let's go ahead and get this uh, little wing tape thing on here. And press down on that bolt lined up here grab your eight millimeter and go ahead and tighten up that hose clamp there so then go ahead and grab your harmonic balancer and again remember the key on here that's going to be pretty much at the bottom so get that lined up Watch the sensor here. Get that pushed on. Grab your 36 millimeter bolt along with your washer. Go ahead and get that started in there. Get that tight. Let's go ahead and grab a torque wrench. So grab your torque wrench and we're going to torque that to 260 foot pounds. My torque wrench only goes up to 250, um, so we'll probably just maybe in a quarter of a turn more if we have to. It's probably going to take quite a bit of strain to get this to click here. So like that. And let me just see if I can even go a quarter of a turn here. about like that so then crawl underneath here don't forget to remove this uh, little tool here out of the flex plate and figure that's probably going to be tied up against there just from tightening it let me see if I can just put a screwdriver here and kind of pry out with it just like that so there's that don't forget to remove that. Then take your little uh, dust cover here. And uh, you can see you got a larger tab on this side, smaller one on this. The larger one's going to go towards the uh, transmission filter here. Slide that in. And then you're just going to kind of bow this to try to get it uh, back into place here. So just kind of bend that. Get it up in place like that. So now let's go ahead and get our uh, pulley back in place here. So grab your uh, three bolts and your two nuts here. And we'll get them on the studs there. Get this sensor out of the way here. So go ahead and get that back in place. Nuts started here. Along with this one back down here. Then your three bolts. 
And again, these are all the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up here. So get all those snug with your 14 millimeter. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque all those to 37 foot pounds. And then you can go ahead and plug in your little sensor here. Make sure that clicks. Now let's go ahead and install the belt. Got my new one here. And if you guys didn't take a picture of it, you can always just refer to this uh, little diagram right here that shows how the belt's routed. And, uh, and then of course, if you got dual alternators or not, which this doesn't. So let's go ahead and follow this and get our new belt on. So go ahead and take your belt. And uh, it's pretty simple to do, but uh, of course you got these groove pulleys here. So of course the grooved part is gonna go on those. And then the smooth here, that's gonna be the back side of the belt. We'll go on to those. So now we should be able to push, uh, relieve the tension on the tensioner here, and we'll slip it over this idler pulley. So let me go ahead and grab my half-inch socket wrench. So grab your uh, half-inch breaker bar or socket wrench here, and you're going to pull up on this, relieving the tension. And then as you do that, Go ahead and slip this. It's going to go down around that either pulley here. So kind of like that. And then you can, uh, actually it looks like you slipped off right here. Kind of like that. Relieve the tension here. And then just double check all these pulleys. Make sure you're centered in everything. And you're in all the grooves. So it looks like I need to just go over a little bit on this. And then just go back some on this one. And then once you start it, it'll kind of even itself out as well. So just like that, belt's on. So now go ahead and get your uh, fan clutch back on. Get that set up down in here. Go ahead and spin that on. Righty tighty. Until that stops. You get your fan clutch tool on here. That's what you're going to use. Get that in place like that. Grab my air hammer. And I'll give this a few whacks. Next, grab your fan shroud. Go ahead and get that in place. Grab your two 10 millimeter bolts here. Get those started. And 
go ahead and tighten those up. And you get this hose back in here. Then go ahead and grab your clips. And let's go ahead and get those stuck that back down in there. Locked into place. Just like that. And then same thing on this side. And I was missing two. I did find some new ones. So I could those in place there. Just like that. So now let's go ahead and uh, put our TCM back on. So grab your cables here, kind of tucked away back here. Go ahead and get this down, kind of in place. Get your bottom one in first. Make sure those go in evenly. Don't want to bend any of those pins. And then just push them in and you can hear it kind of snap into place. Just like that. And go ahead and got those little, little tabs down there that are gonna slide into those holes on the shroud. Get those in place. Grab your 10 millimeter bolts for this side. And let's go ahead and tighten those down. All right guys, so next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flush the uh, heater core because uh, his heat's not working too well. And um, before I started this job, with it warm and everything, I checked the uh, temperature of these hoses here. And uh, this one towards the driver's side was hot, as where this one was just kind of lukewarm. And these should be the same temperature. So this is going to be the inlet. So that's coming off the EGR. So that's going into the heater core. And then this is coming out. So if this one's cool, then most likely you have a bunch of crud in your uh, heater core there. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the hoses off here and then right there at the EGR. You can do it at the heater core, but I don't recommend it because um, it's kind of plastic back in there. And if you break one of those off, um, then you got to take apart the whole dash, I think, in order to get that heater core out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just try and pull them off of these uh, two areas right here. So let's see if we can get this one off first for the uh, outlet. It's going to take a pair of ice grips, see if we can squeeze these. So there's that one. And let me get a drip pan under there in case that drips. Kind of tuck that one away. Now we got better access to that clamp there. All right, guys, so this clamp's going to be a lot harder to get to. Uh, let me see if I can take these vice grips here. And let's see if we can get on this. Oops, sorry about that. So I got that kind of locked on there. Let's just see if we can, let me see if we can just pull this off. So I went ahead and just pulled that off. Kind of like that. So the way I'm going to flush that heater core is I'm going to use this tool here. Um, you can get this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But it's the same company as the uh, flex plate tool there, which is the Lisley. And um, what you do is you hook up your garden hose to this, 
and then you also hook up some uh, compressed air and then you got this button here so you'll give it a burst of air and that'll help uh, flush out some of the stuff that's in the uh, heater core and then the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to take this uh, milk jug here and it's empty and clean I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the outlet hose into that milk jug there and then I'll put my tool into the uh, inlet hose there We'll go ahead and start spraying and giving it a burst of air and see what we can come out with. All right, so you can see I got my outlet hose and going in this milk jug. It's kind of hard to uh, get it up in there, but hopefully this will work at least for a little bit here. And then this is kind of has a barb fitting on it, so you can stick this on the inlet hose. Kind of like that and then like I said you can give it a burst of air here and actually just that burst of air you can see flush it out some here so let me go ahead and spray that all right guys so it's kind of hard for you to see but there's a little bit of crud in there so i'm going to keep uh just doing small bursts of this and see what all i can get out of it and then i'll come back uh it's kind of hard for you guys to see what i'm exactly doing here but all right guys so i went ahead and did that a few more times and you can see now it's uh clean and there wasn't really as much debris as i thought there would be um just a little you know dirt specks and air of that but um it's actually pretty clean so i think the issue was mainly that uh, thermostat was partially stuck open. I think that's why it wasn't heating up. So let's go ahead and uh, get all these hoses back on real quick. So let's go ahead and get this back on here. Got my hose clamp with the vice grips. Kind of a pain to do here. Let's get this one back on here. And of course, get this one back on here. All right, guys, so one last thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to pull this reservoir out of here. You can see whoever did this before didn't even put it back in correctly. Um, but you got two hoses down here connecting. So you got your large one there, and then this uh, this one here just clips in. Um, I'm not going to record that because this video is probably going to be long enough as it is, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, get this cleaned out really quick. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and uh, got this back in. Um, didn't really get as clean as I wanted it to. They usually never do, but I did get some of the crud out of there. So these just get uh, foggy over time from the heat and everything, so it's better just to replace the whole thing if you can. And then I forgot to mention there's a... There was a bolt here as well, but you can, uh, once I got this off, you can see it was busted. So it rusted out probably from the battery acid and all that here. Rusted out and it was uh, snapped off. That's probably why somebody didn't put this back in correctly. So Next, go ahead and uh, crawl underneath here. Let's go ahead and tighten up the radiator drain there. And we should be about ready to fill. that nice and tight probably about like that i'm gonna go ahead and uh, wipe this off real quick so before we start filling let's go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter let's go ahead and pull this uh, bleeder valve here and then once we start filling we'll uh keep checking this until uh, coolant starts flowing out of there at a steady rate and then we'll go ahead and uh put this bolt back in there that way we know we got all the air out of the system okay so what I'll be using to fill it is um, I got three gallons of this distilled water you can pick this up at Walmart it's like around a dollar twenty or so you want to use distilled water because it won't boil and I uh, also picked up three gallons of this peak uh, Dexcool concentrate um, 
I prefer to use a concentrate because this is around $14 a gallon um, and then just mix it yourself. It's pretty simple to do. You get more for your money that way. Or you can buy the 50-50, they sell that as well. It's around like $12 a gallon. And I'll put a link in the description for this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably add this full bottle into the uh, reservoir there, plus a gallon of distilled water. And then I'll go ahead and mix my other inside this empty one here. So we'll go 50-50 on that. So grab yourself a funnel here, get that put in there. And like I said, go ahead and add this gallon of concentrate because I know this is going to take quite a bit. So there's that whole gallon. Grab your gallon of distilled water. Okay, so what I like to do is uh, take your new gallon concentrate here. This is the empty one we just used. And what I like to do just to make sure we get a perfect mix is I'll put half of this into this one here. And then uh, there's no sight glass on these jugs here. So you may have to just take a flashlight. You can kind of see the color difference there. And then just get them, get them about equal there. So looks like this one's about right at that line. This one's just above, which is fine. So then what you'll do, take your uh, distilled water here, and then we'll go ahead and put half in this bottle and then half in that bottle. And that gives you your 50-50 uh, mix. And we'll do that with the third gallon of concentrate too once we get through these two gallons here. So just like that, now we got two full gallons. So let's go ahead and add those. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a rag here and uh, just kind of shove that right by that bleeder hole there because that'll start rushing out of there. And I don't want to get a bunch of antifreeze cooling on the uh, new belt there. So just kind of like that to soak up some of that. And go ahead and continue filling. Again, just watch that uh, leader plug there. Oh, and you can see right there. You can see it's starting to kind of come out there. Just go a little more here. So once that starts coming out, no air bubbles. Go ahead and stick that back in there. Go ahead and tighten that up. Get this rag out of here. And luckily we don't make too big of a mess. So then just go ahead and uh, fill it some more. So you can see the full cold line is gonna be right at this where the plastic meets. That's gonna be your full cold line. Um, if we go over that a little bit, it's gonna be fine. So you can see pretty much right at the uh, full cold line there now. So you just add a little more and I think that'll be good for right now. Now we can uh, go ahead and hook up our batteries. Okay, so now we should be uh, ready to go ahead and start it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the uh, lower skid plate off. That way we can uh, check for leaks and everything. Okay, so now we can go ahead and uh, start it up here. Again, just make sure you got that key out of the uh, flex plate. You don't want to start that with that in it, so just double check. Go ahead and start it. And you can see, so we're at, uh, we're cold right now on the water temp. 
So we'll go ahead and let this run, see if we can reach a normal operating temperature. And then you'll want to go ahead and uh, turn your heater on so we can get that flowing through the heater core. And let's go check for leaks real quick. And we can go ahead and put our cap back on for now. And like I said, I'll go ahead and let this idle. Um, if it doesn't reach temperature, I'll go ahead and uh, take this for a drive. We'll come back and we'll check our level. All right, guys, so I ended up having to uh, take this for a little spin in order to get the thermostats to open up. It's kind of a cold day today, so they weren't going to open up just sitting here idling. Um, but as soon as I took it for a spin, temperature started climbing and the thermostats did open up. And then as soon as those opened up, I got a warning message here saying low coolant level. So I ended up uh, topping that off because I brought a jug with me on the drive. And uh, now we're looking good at our temperature. And then also this uh, the heater core is working way better. It'll cook you out now. Unlike before, it would barely just get like lukewarm. So let's go ahead and uh, check our level here real quick. All right guys, so as you can see, our level did drop just a little bit more. Um, like I said, I had to top that off when the thermostats opened up. Probably added about two more quarts there, uh, but you can see it dropped a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit overnight, let it cool, and then that level is probably gonna drop even more just cause uh, cooling expands when it gets hot. So I'll check that level in the morning and then uh, top it off if I need to. And then just crawl underneath here, check for any leaks. This all looks good. Don't see any uh, coolant leaking or anything. And then you can go ahead and uh, get your skid plate back on. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video. Again, this was a 2004 GMC Sierra 2500 HD with a 6.6 .6 LLY Duramax diesel. Went ahead and replaced the water pump along with the thermostats and then uh, flushed the heater core and then of course drained and refilled the cooling system. So hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, that's why I do these videos. Uh, I just need a couple certain tools to get this job done, but uh, saving yourself some money, do it yourself. And uh, I ended up using just a little over six gallons of coolant, just to let you know. And uh, if you like this video, why don't you subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos. I got a bunch on this truck alone, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.